Hello everyone, I hope all is well and you had a wonderful start to the new year. I welcome you to subscribe to my channel and please follow me as I create content. I dedicated last year to development of several articles and infographics and so forth and also some videos and I'm going to take this trend right into 2021 where I'll produce knowledge that can be shared with others. Therefore, follow me on my journey as I share my knowledge and also if you'd like me to address a topic that is within the confines of my dominant themes that I've discussed, I welcome you to take part in the promotion of knowledge. Send me an idea and I will also create a blog for this once it's within the context of my themes. In this video blog, I want to report to you my result from 23andMe. After a few weeks, I submitted my DNA for testing to 23andMe. After waiting endlessly, I got the result and I'm going to share it with you in a moment. However, before I move on, let me provide an overview of 23andMe. 23andMe has over 12 million users in their database. They provide DNA testing. The results can be used to establish family history and so forth. There are several other DNA testing systems out there. Therefore, please do your research diligently before you select one. I take this DNA testing seriously. After all, my family name is solely connected to the name Jawala, and over the years I have searched the internet to explore where this name came from. I found it located in India, one family that is. I often wonder about my connections to this really name that I have. Therefore my decision to engage in 23andMe was intended to bring me closer to some of my connections out there. I did the reveal with my family members and they were all excited about it. They were present when I opened the email. As a child in Jamaica, I always knew that I was somewhat different from my classmates at school. So let me start my reveal. I'd like to give you an overview of the interface of 23andMe. For example, I was able to see the breakdown as it relates to my ethnicity. Based on the DNA results, I can see that my present existence is based on several historical events. And I cannot move away from that. I am from the Caribbean and the reality is that the Caribbean inhabitants dates way back to 7,000 years ago. However, based on the invasion by the Europeans, the region's indigenous population collapsed within decades after the Spanish had arrived. The eradication of these inhabitants must be described as one of the greatest travesty to humanity. However, the Spaniards who took over Jamaica during that time could not hold on to the country. Subsequently. In May 1655, 7,000 English soldiers forced a small Spanish army to surrender Jamaica to them. The British now had Jamaica under their hands and they had one thought. The thought was gaining wealth. Remember, wherever colonization took place, it was not to benefit those individuals who were living there. However, to cultivate sugarcane, they needed labor. Therefore, they needed to develop the sugar industry and that need led to the importation of slaves. As a result, many people like myself within the Caribbean will now have connections to West Africa, a consequence of the transatlantic slave trade that continued in the region until slavery was abolished in Jamaica, that is, in 1834. While one segment of my ancestry can be connected to Africa based on slavery, the other part of my story comes from Central and South Asia. This line of ancestors started to arrive in the Caribbean after emancipation. After emancipation, the plantation owners wanted workers. So they looked towards various countries and they saw India as one of the main source for the indentured workers and they were brought in. Please stay tuned for other blogs that I will do that would explore the indentureship period. Now here's a breakdown based on the report from 23andMe. My ancestors can be traced back to Central and South Asia. My DNA suggests that I am 52.1% connected to this region. And as a matter of fact, they have indicated to me that I also have connections with South Asia and that is 12.5%. When I further examine the data for the 52.1%, I have connections with India and Pakistan. However, you know that that region was divided over a period of time during the British rule. 
The other major part of my DNA suggests that my ancestors can be linked to sub-Saharan Africa. The DNA percentage connected to this was 42.2%. And I am happy to report that I have connections with Ghana, Nigeria, and also another place. I was somewhat surprised to see that I had connections to Southeast Asia and Native America, which was 5.3 of my DNA. However, I'm sure that these connections could be as a result of several generations before. In summary, Jamaica witnessed an influx of slaves from Nigeria and Ghana. During this period of slavery, I am sure that my timeline now makes connections to that. Based on the assumption, I can say that a Nigerian and a Ghanaian produced an offspring that is now part of my family tree. While I have completed the process of 23andMe, I am cautious about the report based on the database they have. The reality is, since this is a paid system, the database will be based on those who can afford the testing. I'm sure you will realize that our population exceeds more than 12 million. As a result, I have decided to submit my DNA to another database within the next few days and stay tuned, I will give you more information on that one. Based on the package I took out from 23andMe, I was able to see various ancestry reports. For example, health reports and possible reports regarding relatives and other reports. I would say that these reports have substantial benefits and you will find these reports interesting. However, remember, it is possible that you could find information that you cannot handle. Notwithstanding, these reports provided me with possible insights into some diseases that I may be predisposed to. However, the main thing is that the data provided me a direct connection to the regions where my ancestors came from. As I reflect on those who have gone before, I am cognizant of their struggles across the Atlantic and on these plantations. I am also cognizant that my ancestors were enslaved and were part of the indentureship system and in many cases while they signed contracts, these contracts were not honored at the end of the time period. Let me also make it clear, I already know who my great-grandfather is. I met him. He arrived in Jamaica from India in 1917 and worked on a particular plantation for 54 years. Follow me as I go deeper into these connections over the next few weeks. During these blogs, I will share my research on what it was like for my ancestors as they traveled and settled in the Caribbean. Please remember to subscribe and share. See you soon and remember... We must develop content, we must share content because a lot of this content that has been created are scattered across the internet. So I want to use this channel as a window into various topics and issues that continue to be dominant and relevant. So remember, please like and share this video. Thanks for watching.